listening to the Behind the Scenes Podcast Diary, episode number eight. Welcome to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Podcast Diary, an exclusive look at the behind the scenes misadventures of a 30-something thriller writer. Discover how close she is to releasing her latest novel, hear exciting details about upcoming writing projects and the tools and strategies she uses to publish her books. You can find the episode show notes and lots more information at ameliahay.com forward slash podcast forward slash BTS. Hello writers, I'm super excited to announce that I've finally stopped procrastinating and have overcome my writing slump. Before I share seven tips on how to stop procrastinating and get out of that writing slump, I want to share with you a recent experience I had while writing the first draft of my crime thriller novella, Missing. So how long has it been? I want you to understand that I'm not being over dramatic. It's been 41 days since I last consistently contributed to the word count for my novella Missing. However, this isn't the first writing slump I've experienced with writing this novella. I experienced another month long writing slump between writing Act 1 and Act 2. The reason for that writing slump was the story hit a little too close to home for me and it was difficult to write. So instead of being a professional and continuing to write through the hard moments, I gave into the temptation to procrastinate. I've fallen into the same habit again and that's the truth. There's no way to make this sound sexy. Writing is hard and the temptation to give into resistance and get distracted by everything else that's going on is great. So where was I in my story before I stopped writing? I had reached scene 24 out of a total of 43 scenes. It's safe to say that I had gone beyond the midpoint of missing. You could put my writing slump down as a side effect of reaching the midpoint of the story. This time it wasn't as easy as getting back in the chair and starting to write. On Monday evening I was watching reruns of the BBC series Merlin on Netflix. As the credits rolled across the screen for the first season episode, I saw the filming location for Camelot and the Pendragon Castle. I got a little curious and saw that it was located an hour outside of Paris and then I watched the next episode and then went to bed. Just a side note, the pre-Roland version of me wouldn't have watched the credits but I'm married to someone that can't get up from the chair until that last line has scrolled off the page. This is not just exclusive to TV shows either. We do this to every movie we go and see so... Yeah, I appreciate the credits now. The next day I decided to trick myself into writing by listening to my MacBook read back the previous scenes in my novella. I didn't read through all 23 scenes but the last two scenes before I stopped writing. As I was listening I got the idea of using Chateau de Pierrefonds as a location in my novella. I wrote a note and then started editing what I had already written. First I deleted a scene in my novella that was really for my benefit. This scene is mentioned from the perspective perspective of another character so you get James's reaction in the start of the story and then in act two you see the other person and you see how they felt and the reasoning behind their action. So in order for me to write the scenes in the second act I needed to write the scene in the first act as it happened. After that I started reading and making minor proofreading edits to the previous scenes in Missing. In regards to the edits I couldn't help myself. The read through helps me reconnect with my characters and the story. As a result I created a list of scene notes to help me write the next scene in the story. The very next day I repeated the same process. I decided to read through the entire second act of my novella. It was during this session that I realised another scene in the second act was much better as the midpoint of the story than the original scene. So I moved this scene to the midpoint of the story and structurally speaking the story makes a bit more sense now. Before I 
share the before and after word counts for missing, I want to point out at this time it's more important for me to break the habit of procrastinating and getting back into writing instead of contributing my word count in a significant way. So before the writing slump, my word count was just over 17,000 words. After proofreading edits, deleting filler and crutch words, plus removing a short scene of around 400 words and writing an extra scene, the word count is now a little under 18,000 words. Even though this increase in my word count is nothing spectacular, it bears another level of significance. It's evidence of hours spent improving my novella. I now have a better story than I did 41 days ago and I sort of feel like this is actually more important than me writing you know a thousand words a day. It's getting back and breaking that habit that I've created almost a month and a half ago. Part of the reason why I spent so long in the writing slump was I was too much in my head and asking questions. Yes, I got analytical about it. I kept asking questions. Questions like, am I doing too much too soon? Why am I resisting my workload? Is this a symptom of a much needed vacation? The problem with getting analytical is it doesn't get words written and it allows me to stay in my head and not on the page. The second reason is, is there is a group of scenes where two of my characters go on a thriller novel style treasure hunt and I had no idea where the characters needed to go. Now that I found one location it was easier to get ideas for the rest of the treasure hunt thus one writing problem was solved. So that's my very long-winded experience with getting out of a writing slump. Part of the reason why I wanted to share so much detail with you is I wanted you to understand that I get what it's like to feel stuck and in a writing slump. And secondly, I didn't just want to create a list of seven tips that I pulled out of the deep crevices of Google and share them with you. These tips are first tried and tested by moi. Well... I reverse engineered what I did and then put put it together in a more coincise fashion. So let's dive straight into the seven tips. Tip number one, read through what you've already written. Yes, you need to start with the dreaded read through. No one likes to hear their work being read out, especially by themselves. If you don't like the sound of your own voice as I do, then get your computer to read back the scenes. It's not going to sound perfect. The computer voice will get things wrong and that's not the point. The point of a read through is to reconnect with your characters and the plot. As you listen or read through the scenes you've written, avoid using your critical mind and enjoy the story. Pay attention to the plot and the characters. Sure, you'll notice mistakes like telling, filtering and overuse of filler words, but remember why you're doing this. You're reading or listening to connect. Sure, you can make a few minor edits to make the reading or the playback easier, but dismiss other edits unless it's a major plot hole that you've just noticed. You'll see these mistakes when you read through your entire manuscript during the revision phase. If it's been way too long since you last contributed to your first draft, then you can't afford to skip this step. This reading is what made me fall in love with my story, the protagonist James Lalonde, and the world I created. Tip number two, create an outline. If you're a pantser, you're probably rolling your eyes at the sound of those words. However, you need to get a sense of what you've written so far. And this outline will come in handy during the revision phase. This outline doesn't have to be a proper fully fledged outline. It's just a list of scenes that you've written so far. You don't have to get as detailed as the outlines I create in Excel. All you need to do is write one or two lines about each scene in your novel. If you're that way inclined, you might want to add extra columns for the point of view character, location, scene number. Keep in mind that all you need is a general gist of what has happened in the story so far so you can figure out where to go from here. If you already have an outline, go through your manuscript and make any necessary changes to your outline. After that, you need to pay attention to where your story goes from where you last stopped writing. 
Tip number three, start small. One of the biggest lessons I've had to learn in regards to getting back into writing after a slump is lowering my expectations. In the past, I've made the mistake of setting my sights on the number of words I have left to write and setting a deadline and forcing myself to write to that date. When in reality, what I need to do was break the bad writing habit that I had formed. So set yourself a small goal to read through the previous scene and start writing the next scene, even if it's a few hundred words. Just get back on that writing horse. Tip number four, write every day. When I say write every day, I don't mean write 5,000 words or even 1,000 words. Start out by writing in short bursts in your downtime. Spoiler alert, you probably won't want to do this. The fact is no one wants to do things in their downtime, but commit to doing it anyway. Bribe yourself, do whatever it takes within reason. Got a spare 15 minutes? Great, write a small section in your current work in progress. You need to focus on time spent on your novel and not how many words got written that day. Tip number five, throw away that deadline. I realize this tip sounds counterintuitive, but bear with me for a second. Think about what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to get back into writing and break the habit you've created with the writing slump, not finish your first draft. The goal of finishing your first draft is a goal you should set after you've broken the habit of avoiding writing. So forget about writing and for the next 10 days, focus on writing or contributing to your manuscript each day. Tip number six is to write in sprints. If you're struggling to write, then one hour will seem like a long time. So set yourself a timer of 15 or 20 minutes and start writing a short beat within a scene and continue to work in these short in increments. The truth is writing for 15 minutes is much easier than writing 1000 words in the next hour. We've all heard that saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I know that's cliche, but you need to make getting back into writing as easy as possible possible. Tip number seven is don't write in order. One of the benefits of having an outline is you don't have to write in order. If you're struggling with a scene and feel stuck, then you can skip ahead to another scene and come back at a later time and tackle your initial writing problem. When I was writing the first draft of Immunity, which is now the third book in my James Alon series, I felt stuck around the midpoint. What can I say? I'm a slow learner. One morning after an embarrassingly long writing slump, I started to write the villain's speech from the hero at the mercy of the villain scene in the climax of the third act. I got so into writing that scene that I sat down on my desk, flipped open my MacBook and continued to write the scene. I originally started writing a few notes in Apple Notes and then I got so into it, I went straight to my computer. As a result, I fell in love with that story again and couldn't wait to finish the novel. I'm sure it was mid set September, and by the end of October I had finished writing the first draft of Immunity and that's when I got the idea for Silence which is now the second book in the series. I dived straight into National Novel Writing Month and wrote the first draft of Silence. Just a quick recap, the seven tips on how to stop procrastinating and get out of that writing slump are as follows. Read through what you've already written create an outline, start small, write every day, throw away that deadline, write in sprints and don't write in order. Have you been stuck in a writing slump? Or have you recently got out of a writing slump? I want to hear from you. Let me know by coming over to the blog post and share your tips or experience with writing slumps in the comments section. Thank you for listening and happy reading and writing everybody. Thank you for listening to Amelia's Behind the Scenes Podcast Diary. If you're new to this podcast and want to be notified about more episodes just like this, then click the subscribe button right now. I'm your host, Amelia Hay, and I'll see you next week for another diary episode.